Hey everyone, in this satisfactory guide video, I'll be showing you how to build an efficient starter oil setup that will produce 100 plastic and rubber and 1200 megawatts of power using fuel. And we will be doing all this without any alternate recipes in phases in order to optimize your transition into oil. For the starter oil setup, you will need to provide a full pipe of 300 crude oil per minute. And you could do this with one pure crude oil node overclocked to 125% in order to make 300 per minute or any other combination of oil. And what we are going to start working with is plastic, rubber, and residual fuel. Creating plastic and rubber is the same, except rubber has double the heavy oil residue that it produces. Then we want to convert the heavy oil residue into fuel using the residual fuel recipe. And the final product we are going to be creating is this, which produces a total of 1200 megawatts of power, 100 plastic per minute, and 100 rubber per minute. We are also going to be doing four package fuel per minute so that you can start stockpiling them in order for you to use inside your vehicles or jetpack. Oil introduces you to a new building called the refinery. And the refinery has a new type of mechanic where it can produce two different outputs. You need to make sure that you are always producing both of these items continuously, because if you do not, and one of these items back up, then it'll stop the machine from working and the other one will not be producing. Here you can see that these refineries are not working and nothing is being produced. And the reason for that is these fluid buffers. They are now full of fuel. What happens is the fuel backs up into these refineries and then these refineries aren't producing anymore so then the heavy oil residue input starts to fill up and because these are now full they back up into the first set of refineries and then these refineries are now full of heavy oil residue and so as you can see here no plastic is being produced the plastic is now full here but because the heavy oil residue is full it prevents the machine from working and creating more plastic so until you find a way to use the fuel, you will need to either add more fluid buffers to the system or you can come into the fluid buffer and select full pipe network and then flush. And what that will do is completely drain all of the fuel in this entire system. And it will allow these refineries to start working again. And because these fuel refineries are working up here, heavy oil residue can now flow back. And because the oil residue is no longer filling the refineries in the back we are starting to create plastic and rubber again so this is very important to understand in order to be able to troubleshoot problems you might have one way to mitigate that problem and we are not doing that in this guide is to create petroleum coke you could send the heavy oil residue to be turned into petroleum coke and then you can send this petroleum coke into an awesome sink and that way your heavy oil residue is continuously being turned into petroleum coke and the system will never back up but if you follow this guide hopefully that won't be a problem start with a 21 by 16 platform if you have a pipeline floor hole start by putting one down right about here and this is where your pipeline will come in Start by grabbing a refinery and lining it up so that the bottom of it is at the start of the third row and that it is in the middle of the 15th column. Then you want to put a total of 10 refineries side by side. Put down a pipeline junction cross, lining it up behind the first refinery and the pipe coming out from this hole. And you're going to do this behind every refinery. Then finish the piping between all the crosses and the refineries and within the crosses themselves. The reason I individually connect them like that and not just do one long pipe and then add the junction cross on top of that pipe is because if you don't do it this way, your lines are going to be prone to some issues. And so I like to avoid future headaches just by doing it manually like this. I like to color code my pipes according to what's inside of them. So in this case, we got oil. So I'm going to color these pipes black, but this is not a mandatory step. And to do that, you want to press X to open up the customizer. You want to set any one of these swatches to black, and then you can assign it to your hotbar like I've done here. Next, you want to configure the first five refineries to do plastic. 
and this will create plastic and heavy oil residue. Then you want to configure the last five to do rubber, which is the same thing except rubber instead of plastic. And this is what you should have so far. Next, ideally, you would connect your oil and let the pipes fill while we continue on the next step. In our case, since we are lifting up, we want to add a pump or else we are going to have no oil at the top and we'll connect it to the power. Now, as you can see, all the pipes are now filling up with oil. The next step is going to be to connect the belts and the pipes for the outputs of the refineries. So normally I would bring all the outputs and inputs down from the bottom and have a logistics floor. But for the purpose of the guide, I find it is easier if I just showed you everything on the same level so that you can fully understand what is happening. Grab a conveyor lift and put it on the before last refinery on the right. And then just put down another conveyor lift like this so that you create this nice little bridge that you can then pipe your pipes underneath. Put down a pipeline junction cross, lining it up with the refinery output that is in column five and, be and directly between rows five and six. Then you'll want to put a pipe from the first refinery, do a nice 90 degree angle here, and then you want to pipe into that junction cross just like that. And we want to repeat this all the way down. Always make sure to put the junction cross down first, however, because they will prevent some flow issues in the future. I'm going to color these ones purple because heavy oil residue is purple. Next, we are going to put down these conveyor lists on all the refineries. Once completed, this should look like this now. Then in front of all the conveyor lifts, you want to put a merger in row six, but just one notch between six and seven. And you want to make sure that the output of this merger is facing to the right for four more times. Then on the fifth one, you want to just do the same thing, but this time the output to face forward. Same thing with the sixth one. And for the rest, you'll want to make sure that the output is faced to the left. Then you want to go ahead and belt all the conveyor lifts to the mergers and the first five mergers together. Then you'll skip the fifth and sixth mergers. You won't connect this one and you'll connect the other ones together. Next, we will work on the fuel part. So you'll want to grab a refinery, make sure that it is facing the same way I'm showing you right now and have the start of the back of the refinery to be at the start of the eighth row and you want to just make it line up with the refinery behind it like this. Then you'll put down three refineries. Grab a pipe and bring it here to the middle of the last column, the 16th column. And you just want to make it so that it curves around nicely in the middle of the seventh row right here in the middle of it. Then you want to put down your junction crosses first for all three refineries. And then you want to pipe all of these in together, just like that. And this is what you should have so far. Then set all these three refineries to be doing residual fuel, which converts the heavy oil residue into fuel. You'll want to underclock one of these so that it does 20 fuel per minute, so that we will have a total of 100 fuel per minute. Now in the eighth row, you'll want to put down in the middle of the second and third column a storage container and you'll want to repeat that in the rows nine and ten you'll belt this merger right here which is the merger of the rubbers you'll belt it into the first storage container just like that and you'll do the same now for the plastic then you should have both lines hooked up like this then we'll want to connect the fuel output from these three refineries. So we just want to merge these lines together. So we'll put it in the middle of row 10 and 11 and right in front of the middle refinery. And we just want to pipe these in like this. And fuel's already orange, so I don't need to change this color. Yay. All right. Now, for now, there's nothing we are doing with fuel. So what we will be doing is adding some fluid buffers. And we'll be doing that right here in the middle of row 13. And for these, I would put down quite a bit of these. They don't cost you that much. And it's up to you how much you want to put in here. Each one holds 400. And we're producing 100 a minute, which means each one of these will take four minutes to fill. We want to store this fuel 
into these fluid buffers and then you just connect each one to the next just like this super easy so here we have eight which means we'll be good for about 32 minutes of game time before they fill up so you can add more to make the time longer or every 30 minutes you come here and you just select full pipe network and then you flush it and what that will do is it will fully empty all the fuel out of all the pipes and the storage and it'll start the 30 minute timer again so it's up to you how you want to do it but assuming you just unlocked oil this is what you will want to do and this is your basic setup done this setup produces 100 rubber plastic and fuel per minute all that's left for the first phase is to now connect the power we are now producing the rubber and plastic and it's all being stored right here and we are starting to see fuel being produced but there is one problem. It's not so much a problem right now because we are not needing the fuel, but if the rubber and the plastic lines fill up, then it will stop producing the fuel. And that's going to be bad when we have our fuel generators running. And we can prevent that by overflowing the rubber and plastic lines into an awesome sink. So we will do that right now. For this, I would suggest doing smart splitters. Now you don't need smart splitters if you don't have it unlocked, you could use regular splitters, but I would prioritize getting smart splitters because they are going to be very useful going forward. First, we are going to set a smart splitter so that it's lined up halfway between columns three and four. Then we want to add another smart splitter in the middle of the fourth column of the rubber belt. Put down an awesome sink in the middle of columns two and three and where the beginning of it is in row 12. Then you want to put a mark three belt and you want to line it up with this smart splitter that's on the rubber line so you want to line it up just like this and then add a lift to that line a lift on the smart splitter and then you you just want to connect those two things together with a mark three make sure that the lifts are mark three also then we are going to add a lift to this smart splitter right here and we are going to add a merger lining up with that lift and then we'll connect a belt in between then what we can do is set both smart splitters to be the left output to be overflow. Once the storage containers are full here, the rubber and the plastic will be belted up towards the awesome sink. And that way you don't have to worry about anything backing up and everything will continue producing. And this will be important because once we do hook up the fuel, you don't want the fuel production to stop because you're full of rubber and plastic. Phase one is now complete. If you enjoyed this video so far, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to get more guides for Satisfactory. It really helps the channel a lot and I really do appreciate it. With the rubber and the plastic that you are now creating in phase one, you can start unlocking some milestones that you are going to need in order to progress. The first one I would be getting is this one right here, the alternate fluid transport. The thing with that is you are going to need to create some heavy modular frames, but since you only need 25 of these, you can manually craft them. You don't need to go straight to the industrial manufacturing here and create a manufacturer. You can, you can wait until later for this. So I would first concentrate on doing the alternate fluid transport so that you can start unlocking the packager, which is what we are going to need for the next phase. Phase two is not a big phase. We just have to do two things. One, set up the package fuel and upgrade the buffers to industrial buffers. Start by putting in a splitter on the plastic line and you want to line this up with the rubber merger below. Then put down a constructor in the 10th row and 8th column and belt the constructor up from this splitter just like that and set the constructor to do some empty canisters. Then right here in front of it still in the 10th row but 6th column you'll want to put down a packager and you could belt the constructor to the packager and set this packager to do package fuel. And since we don't need a lot of this, we are going to just set this to four per minute. And the reason for that is that we are producing 100 fuel per minute and each fuel generator later on takes 12 fuel per minute in order to run. So if we do 100 divided by 12, you'll see that we get this weird number. If we do 96 divided by 12, we get a good even eight. So we take just four fuel from the 100 to make these package fuel 
fuels and we can use package fuel for things like our jetpack later on so it's good to start stockpiling them so we're going to add a belt from here and then here we are going to want to add a smart splitter if you have it if not then it's not the end of the world if this backs up uh, it'll just stop using fuel and you'll just have extra fuel so it's not a big deal then we'll add a merger on this line right here to try to line it up with Okay, so we're going to have to move this one back and line it up with the merger and then belt it in. Then we're going to set the overflow on the right side so that if we have extra, we can just sink the rest. Now for package fuel, we also need to give it some fuel. So we will bring a line from here into here. Here we want to remove the line and then we want to add a junction cross. The reason we're removing the line there is just to make sure that things are connected properly. Then we're going to bring this line down about halfway and then we're going to go down two notches so we can do that perfect turn. To line this up properly, you'll want to use a two meter foundation. Add that right here, then add your junction cross right on top and that will line the junction cross perfectly with the packager then you'll just want to connect the pipes the last thing we'll want to do here is add a pump and then we just want to power all these three items and there you go the constructor is making empty canisters and it's sending into the packager and then the packager is producing package fuel the last thing we want to do in this phase is to update these small buffer fluids into industrial ones so start by removing your fuel buffers here and then we are going to remove all these lines you can hover over the first one and then hold control and then hold that toggle dismantle key bind and if you don't know what i'm talking about you can see my 40 tips and trick video that i'm going to link right here at the top right you can go there after and then just see a whole bunch of tips including that one so here you just want to put down an industrial buffer right where the other one was so you'll want to put it in the middle of row 13 over here and lined up with this for the first one and then you just want to add a few of these and then you just want to pipe them in like we did the other ones you don't need a ton of these each one does 2400 and since we're producing 100 per minute these will take 24 minutes each to fill up and since i have five of them it will take over two hours to fill up i would do the same thing i would flush it every two hours if you're about to unlock fuel or you've already unlocked fuel and you're moving on to the next step then don't even bother with this i would just put one of these down that gives you 24 minutes of buffer and that's it because you'll see a next phase we actually remove all of these and we just stay with one so it's up to you but in the end of phase two this is what it should look like and this time it should have proper numbering on the left for phase three you want to make sure that in tier six you have the expanded power infrastructure milestone completed and this will allow you to do fuel generators what you want to do here is you want to start doing some fuel generators you want to make sure that the bottom of the fuel generator lines up with the bottom of row 15 and it's lined up with the second fuel buffer now if you don't have the second fuel buffer another way that you can look at it is on the left side of it it starts at the beginning of row 11 then you want to just put down four total in a row like this then i would put your junction crosses i would put it in the middle like this so just i would say one two notches away from the fuel generator and you want to put one down in front of every fuel generator just like this then you want to add your last four fuel generators making sure that the input is downwards towards you and you want to do the same thing you want to line up the input with the junction cross and then you want to just go up twice like one two and then you want to put down four right next to each other and this is for a total of eight then we are going to pipe all the fuel generators and then you want to pipe this pipe to line up with that fuel buffer just like that then just get rid of all these fuel buffers except the first one right here and there you go what i would do now is just let this be don't even plug in the power let it fill if you don't let all the machines fill up with fuel the last machines are going to struggle and they're going to struggle for quite some time so you want to just give it a couple more minutes. So it's like a total, let's say, of five, six minutes and uh, the whole thing will be full. So just let it just let it be. OK, so now that everything is full, you'll want to connect the power and then Bob's your uncle. Now we are producing 1200 megawatts of power just with these eight fuel generators alone. 
And here's what it looks like when it's fully done. Now that you have your basic oil set up, the next logical step is trains. And I got a guide for you right here. 